Hello everyone, welcome back again. This is Jesse, and I'm in today's tutorial. We're learning about type systems in Julia. So, what is a type system? So, before we know what a type system is, let's know what a type is, right? So, a type is a form of symbolic expression usually used to describe an object or a set of values. Maybe like you have a set of values or a set of data, and you are classifying in such a way that you have to tell the compiler that this is what I intend to use this particular value, particular data for. Maybe I want to use it as a real number, as an integer, as a string or something else. So that is the meaning of a type. So we have type systems. There are two main type systems. We have static type and then dynamic type. So there can be nominal, structural, weakly or strongly type. But every program language can be based under static type or dynamic type. So usually dynamic type programming language like Julia usually polymorphic that means that it can operate on different type systems. So when you say a static type, what does it mean? It only means that it's having a type that is computable before code execution. It's like before you execute the code, before you run the code, the type is made computable or computable. But for dynamic type, nothing is known about the type until the runtime. So every value in Julia is a true object. And then since every value is a true object and every value is a, is a, is a form of data type it, so it can be either an abstract type or a concrete type so when you say abstract type what does it mean so this is something i used to explain it simple so abstract from the name abstract means that it is it only exists in thoughts it's an idea without physical existence so it's an abstract type that means like it's just a logical description of something so something like number when i say number is just an idea that i have in thoughts it can be anything it can be integer, float, anything, but it's not specific. It's not bounded to a specified size. It is not solid. So usually, after types are usually the upper hierarchies or the higher hierarchies. They are usually also called the parent type. So that means they have descendants, they have children, right? They are the parent types, so they have children. So they are children of, the children of after types are the concrete types. They are the lower hierarchies. And then the, from the word concrete, that means it is real, right? Is physical and solid, solid that means it's having a specified size or in the story size. That, that explains why when you have an after type, when you use size of it, only tell you that the size is indeterminate. But if it's a concrete type, like integer 64, like a uh, fluid 64, if you use size, I'm going to tell you the particular size of it. So that's one of the ways. So to check for the sub, to check for what is below an after type because after type are parent type that they but here you use the subtype or subset of the types to find it and then to find for the concrete types to, to check for the parent type the parent of them you use for type as i said the concrete types are like the child type or the babies right and after types are like the parent or the grandparents so they are sisters <laughs> so they have descendants okay so let me show you something for example we have this is the hierarchy structure of in julia for numbers above it is any right any is an after type the highest of them then um, uh, we have numbers, complex, real. All these ones are abstract types. They have children or child types, which, which include the uh, concrete types like big fluids, fluidity, cysteine, and all this stuff. So all these ones are the what concrete types, and the ones above are the abstract types. And below all of them is the union type that is the least of all of them. So let me explain it in a different way so that you to understand it. So for example, let's say we have a value like right x is equal to 5, right? So this in Julia, as I said, all values in Julia are true objects, and then types are also objects. So like if I if for it for me to know the type of this, I can, I can just use this function inverse function of type, right? X they're going to tell me that it's an integer. Integer 30 64 because my system is 64 by default. So one thing you should notice that like the type of is not for the x, but rather for the value. So the variables don't have type, but rather the value that has been attached to that variable that is giving it type. So I can change this one into s is equal to 5.6, right? If I check the type of x, it's going to tell me that it's a float 64. So the type of is not for the variable, but for the value attached to the variable. So that's one of the ways of checking for the type of something. So this is a concrete type. This is also a concrete type. So how do I know it's a concrete type? You can just use size of, right? 
of x is going to tell me that it is 8 that time that's having a specified size so all this 8 right is in Julia the sizes are usually in multiples of 8 so this is the byte size of it okay so how do you know the this is this is a concrete type how do you know the parent type so let's create a function one of the ways of doing this use super type right so and then you put your value there i float the value float 64 go to tell me that it's what it's an abstract it's an abstract float so from the diagram we have float 64 the parent is abstract float the parent of abstract float is real so real is the parent the grandparent parent and then child so that is it so let's check some other aspect of it again so you can do the same thing for super type of super type right <laughs> it is super type in 64 so to tell me that it's a signed one so it's signed and we have signed and then unsigned one so let's move on to some aspects you can so let's create a function to be able to help us to know whether it's a parent type or not so i'm going to put a function function parent type right and i'm going to give it a value of say data type so data type is a form of it's a type of type <laughs> so what is this data type let me explain it for example let's say you have a value like this is equal to 10 right if i check for the type of it to tell me that it is what an integer so let me assign the same thing to b and type of this a right and i'm going to check for the type of this what i've assigned to it type of this b it's going to tell me that's a data type so every data in julia has having a type so that's called data type so every value is having data type so it can be either abstract type or concrete type so let's back to our function that we're creating so i'm going to bring this in then it's going to be the level then i'll go with for i in one is to n and i'll go sorry <laughs> then i'll go with s is go to super type of x right and i'll go print line x and then n for this for loop and then end so this is going to be my function of which I've created with this. One better, let me assign a value to it so that it comes with the whole value. Okay, so this is going to be my parent type. So if I want to check for the parent type or something else, I can just do the parent type of a uh, let's say something like integer 64. It's going to list for me as signed, right? integer real and a number the reason is because i've put my level as five so the level is five so the same thing so if i i can even make it more specific by making it like three sign integer and real so let's go for real parent type of real parent type of real is going to let me put it at three Number in so number is the highest, and then any is the highest of the highest. <laughs> okay, so that is one function you can use to create to check for the parent type. So the synthesis, the data type, then you loop through it to the super type to know it. So let's check subtypes also. So subtypes, so you know, subtypes are usually used to find if you have an abstract type and want to find the child type of it. So let's create a function for that. I think I've function already type hierarchy function okay the function should be in a below so that you can check it right something like this okay so this let me explain it so like the previous one the data type is t and then the level is zero right and then it's going to print to the next level and then it's going to loop through the subtype all like that one which was super type then if the subtype is not equal to any then you give me the next so, uh, the next level plus one like a level above the current level okay so let me bring the last one. okay so let's check and see the type hierarchy 
height and then let's see which value do you want to use let's use something like number right so it's going to just loop through it and then give us our values so you see that is number complex and then you see how it is in length it for us that was the purpose of this tab level right to help us in the in length so you see that the type hierarchy the highest hierarchy is number their subtypes are number we have components and real we have abstract with all these ones we have integer big integer boolean signed unsigned and then so forth and so forth so i can even check for this type hierarchy of something like mm, real let me check it for type hierarchy of something like real it's also going to work perfectly for us like the previous one so that's what you see that's working perfectly for us so this is one of the ways of checking for the subtypes of it so you can just use that code so thank you for watching so far with me wow that's good you have been able to stay with me for quite long <laughs> thank you for watching if you have any questions or contribution you can just put it inside the comment section so that everybody can benefit so in the next tutorial we'll be learning about how to create data types stay blessed